Okay, okay, the network as well. That's something they don't have. Exactly, they, they are total... Oh, gold. Yeah, that too. I don't know if I should comment on that because I don't know if she's 18. Alright, what's up everybody? We are on the fifth episode of No Game No Life. That actually reminds me, I forgot to completely look up the title for it. It's called Weak Square. That's what I already saw in the last episode, which I myself still watch today. So, um, first and foremost, a massive shout out to Floxel once again for requesting, of course, me to react to this show. I very much appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I watched episode three and four earlier today which it's interesting how quickly the plot has moved in a specific direction already with like Sora and Shiro basically taking over as king and queen of the human race of humanity, I guess, right? In Alkia, uh, which, yeah, basically led us to already start sort of discovering what the next objectives are going to be. And top priority for now will be to basically win against all the other races and put humanity back on top right number one position uh which is going to cause us to want to actually yeah go to war with all these other nations although it was said that like the other nations wouldn't feel inclined to want to attack us yet because they might be thinking that there's another race helping us out and so they're going to feel like suspicious of each other and so it's clear that Sora is already sort of playing a chess game here um you know where he's like yeah he has a specific strategy in mind I don't know what is next step then is going to be in proceeding to you know move forward with all of this but yeah that's the funny thing is that even if that's already a big task in and of itself uh, that we're going to be facing here we kind of got teased already what like the next step would be which is facing death and so you know that basically mentioned like if you can uh, win against all these 16 uh, or 15 i guess rather right other races that gives you the ability to challenge me and what I really liked seeing was just the dynamic that was going on between somebody like that, Tet and, uh, you know, Sora and Shira, is that they basically didn't even look at each other as rivals in the same way that we saw it happen with Clammy, as an example, right? They were very sort of respecting of each other and their skill levels and stuff. And that was actually, yeah, nice to see for a change to a point where it got me to actually question some of Tet's intentions and, like, if there might be... A possibility that he's actually wanting them to take over as gods for him because he might be like tired of the role or something probably not what's going on still something that i was thinking of on the spot as i saw it play out but um you know i i had a whole talk already in the review that i'm kind of repeating at this point but like it, it's it's just it's just funny to me you know that already got beaten at a chess game by them apparently and so he was made aware of their great potential blank right uh, which, yeah, like, I don't know, it, it's just, it's, it, it put a smile on my face, honestly, because it reminds me that, yeah, if you're really competitive at something, you want to have, you know, like, competitors that can actually challenge you, because otherwise it just gets boring, it gets way too easy, there is no fun in a game if it's not challenging, at least to me, it's, it, it, it almost makes me think about, like, I myself used to be a massive, trophy hunter for example on the playstation i have over a hundred platinum trophies <laughs> which is funny because by now i hardly even like play games anymore to be fair i kind of yeah i i i think it you know like the age that i'm at right now i kind of am starting to find it a bit of a waste of time i play games mostly for the experiences now if there's like a cool story driven game or something like that but back in the days I was trying to grind away at those platinum trophies and i always noticed that i got frustrated if a game like actually had these higher difficulty modes but then the trophy lists wouldn't actually um you know like like inquire you to oh how do i put that like they wouldn't force you to play those higher difficulty modes to actually get the platinum or something right it was basically rewarding you know like well yeah just rewarding you to to, to play on easy and getting the ultimate reward for it already you get what i'm saying like that's just what i always found so unjust about certain games whereas others i noticed this more and more like if they actually and that's the thing like if a game therefore did not want me to play on the highest difficulty mode to get the platinum trophy i wasn't going to do it in the first place because why would i bother you get what i'm saying it feels totally unfair like it feels like you're just playing for no reason basically and i noticed all the more that like the games that did 
challenged me or that did force me to play on those higher difficulty modes, I felt more inclined to actually want to do it. And I felt all the better about getting those platinum trophies, knowing that, you know, other people were going to have a much harder time getting those same trophies and knowing that I myself was up there with like, you know, the like smaller percentage of people that were actually able to get it, right? Like to feel like a reward or to, f I don't know, I don't know how I should even really put this into words, but like to feel um, like you actually did something, achieved something truly, you need to know that other people aren't able to really get there as much. And so you respect it all the more when there are people that you can look up to and that are able to basically be on that same level of you. It's what I noticed too when, for example, doing speedruns and stuff in games too, I would always watch these other speedrunners do the same thing and all that I could feel for them was like respect. Like, holy shit, you're actually pulling this off. That's great, right? So, I don't know, like all the vibes I'm getting from this show, I've already related it a lot to video games and stuff, right? But um, it's, it's just super relatable to me as somebody who used to be very hardcore about that as well back in the days uh, and even to some degree right now you know when there are games that i still play uh yeah that get me to sort of feel that same way but without further ado guys i think we should just dive into the episode at hand and of course if you enjoy my reactions to no game no life then you can already watch the next episodes over on my Patreon straight away, which is going to be linked on top of the description. Over there, we'll have early access to the next episodes, if not the entire rest of the season already. So go and check it out. And then with that being said, let's dive into episode five of No Game, No Life. Yeah, that's the first piece right there. Whoa! Who is talking to Ted right now? Fallen gods? I'm not sure if I understand what's going on. I had a feeling like it it's kind of like the system talking to him, that he like somebody that's assisting him. Oh yeah, they can save more than just Elk, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh shit. Damn, Stephanie kinda of became that pawn. Yeah, I don't know about that. That's the thing. I already called her sort of like a third wheel, right? So I totally expected her to <laughs> complain about it now. <laughs> they're not even... Oh. I was going to say they're not even going to be here, but never mind. Why are they sleeping on like... I don't even know what you call that. Hey. Well, Sora mentioned that he wasn't really feeling comfortable sleeping on a massive, you know, king bed. Oh, God, you don't want to do this, Stephanie. He's like, yeah, great, another opportunity to request something from you. We already know how that played out last time. Oh, God, plus he gets that. You'll become a decent person? That's a lot to ask. <laughs> oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh, he's saying give me a good one and then if I lose... Like, I'll actually make sure I lose. Okay, we're playing Blackjack, but I don't get it. Like, is that not something he can ask as well? Because I was going to say, like, you can just ask something and then make sure you win, right? Because that shouldn't be too big of an issue. A game of chance. I mean, yeah, I mean, Blackjack is chance, but it's also 
still skill to a certain degree, right? Gotta get your 21. <laughs> How much do we have? Jesus, I can't even tell the... There's no numbers on it. Okay, okay. She got him. Uh. Right, right, right. I've never played... Like, honestly, I've never even gone to a casino. I know how blackjack works. But not well enough, I guess. Like, I know you have to get 21. Well, you don't have to get 21, but you just don't have... You know... Damn. Man, just like that, huh? I thought the war was starting, but here we are playing J Blackjack against Stephanie. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, yeah, that's what you should use, I guess. Not really. It's just playing the game. Exactly. Yeah, that's what she was doing. Yeah. I can't say I feel bad for her, though. Oh, God, she literally bumped her head, too. Oh my god. Oh my god, really? We took them from them? Well, well, okay, 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 oh, so we do still have opposition as well. Yeah, that was actually some pretty. Damn, yeah, good mind games. Holy shit, she played her own chess game. <laughs> but you're a Steph. <laughs> Derogatory to a, a Steph. I don't doubt it. Okay, okay, the network as well. That's something they don't have. Exactly. They they are total oh god. Yeah, that too. I don't know if I should comment on that because I don't know if she's 18. Doing what? <laughs> oh man. Are they scared? They are such social rejects. Oh my god, bumping against boobs again. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. You got a bark as well? Okay. Okay. I was gonna say that this is not really a like they would have just made fun of her. Oh, it's not really a dog. Oh, it's one of the other races. Read minds, they're telepaths. Yeah, beast girls. Damn. I think uh, Sora wants to beat them in a different kind of 
Wow, stuck to a leash. Oh, damn, dude. We just left Stephanie alone. Yep, we're going on a holiday. You know how people tie their dogs up to a tree in the forest? Oh my god, the worst fucking thing you could possibly do. Oh, okay. I, I honestly thought we were abandoning her for the time being. <laughs> don't 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 go try facing them in another game just leave that behind oh my god <laughs> well too bad what is she gonna ask then Shiro. Okay, that's a chance game. Why are we seeing panties on the <laughs> bottom screen? Wow. Wow, she's got the data. What, so she would know when people pass by at like certain times and... Oh my god. Why, Shiro? Why? Why are you doing this to her? Yeah. I would this is kind of a Sora move. I'm sure you don't. She's wearing it on the Oh my god. Shiro. Have you been watching Mushika dancing? <laughs> Damn man. Ghost leg? What did that say? What the hell is... And she bet her shawl? I don't even know what her shawl is. Super spicy Russian... Oh my god! She bet her shoes. We're stripping her entirely naked. The game of life. And she bet her bra. Oh god. Oh god. This is... This is... Uh, yeah. We know what this is about to turn into. Yeah, you're going to be betting that tail next. <laughs> it never is. How is that a 100% chance? That's not a 100% chance. That's like 99.999% chance. Oh my god. But how? How would he know? <laughs> She's wearing the bra on her. Oh god. I don't know. Like there, there's clearly some kind of force going against you here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that responsible for that? It should be, but it probably isn't. これが新品のデッキだったらどうだ。ジョーカーを抜いて一番下のカードを選べば、ほぼ100%スペードのエースだ。うん。でも、ああ、新品のトランプとは俺は一言も言ってない。つまり。<laughs> That's so smart. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, I saw it coming already with the subtitles, but uh, it was even funnier when it actually happened. Oh, what the fuck just happened? Why did it start snowing? Oh, man. What is this weird purple glow as well? Oh, 
Exceed rank 2. Right. Oh shit. Oh, the tree. Uh, the servers. Damn. <laughs> oh god, he's putting the middle finger. Blurred. Oh. Why so? Because it's all they need, or? What does he mean they play one game? One game in their lifetime? One... Damn. Yeah, that does look amazing. Whoa, what's the weird magic symbol? Okay, okay, okay. Wow. This is gonna be a presence. Wow, Jesus Christ. No, she's a goddess. Oh, death itself, okay. I don't know why you figured that. <laughs> I've not expected her to talk like that. Alright guys, well don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and of course you can get early access to the next episode straight away over my Patreon page, which is going to be linked on top of the description. Go and check it out. Show moves so goddamn fast, man. Like, <laughs> sometimes I'm literally not able to completely follow along with it. Like, was it mentioned that the Flugel actually are supposed to live in that tree that passed by? I feel like that's what, what it basically said, and they were trying to have it calm down, and it didn't, right? But then there was another Flugel, apparently, in that library that Stephanie talked about, uh, who had won a game against her grandpa and therefore got the library, and that's why she's holed up in there. I think that's, that's basically what was said, right? I also went back to check out the first scene again to try and make sense of that, the conversation Ted was having with these voices that were speaking to him. I'm like, what the hell? I thought, I mean, Ted is supposed to be the god of this entire universe, right? And this almost made it seem like there, there was a higher power above him, but he says it, I, get, I, I think he says it basically or explains it during the short one minute scene. But again, if you just watch it once, you're not even able to fully process all the information. But I guess those are all deus, right? That's what he called them, I think. Like the fallen gods is what was mentioned. They were like rank two or something. So those are like previous or prior gods, I should rather say, that are still talking to him and kind of seem to have caught on to what Ted's intentions are of like wanting to join the battle himself eventually I don't know what it's about it's clearly teasing something and we're gonna have to see where um um yeah where that all leads for now this episode was simply a lot of fun I feel bad for Stephanie in general man like <laughs> playing all those games constantly losing the way that Sora and Shiro then mentioned that basically the world is designed for um for games to be determined beforehand already i don't know if they necessarily mean with that that it's also designed for them to win constantly because that's kind of a way you could also interpret it right maybe just for them to win against stephanie but maybe they can't win against uh yeah against other parties or races or something but i don't know what they figure there exactly like i said all of this i mean it's just question marks for now and all that i can really say is like yeah we'll have to wait and see where we go from here and where that's going to take us because for now i have a hard time filling in those those blanks no pun intended myself but guys i really hope you enjoyed my reaction and review to episode uh five i think this was yeah right of um of no game no life if you did then of course if you're watching these on youtube you can you know get early access to the next episodes straight away over my patreon page which is going to be linked on top of the description so go and check it out and then for now i want to thank you all a lot for tuning in and i look forward to seeing you back in the next episode